Hello, who's this? This is Candy. Oh, hi, Candy. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Did you have a good week off? Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Did you have a good week off? I did. I think it was like two weeks. <laughs> Was it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, maybe it was. <laughs> we'll wait a couple minutes and see if we get somebody else. Okay. Oh. Crystal? Crystal? Crystal, can you hear me? Oh, she got her. I got her. I'm here. I was stuck on mute. Oh, okay. I got you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? All right. Pretty good. Did you have a good week, uh, day off? A uh, week off? Two weeks, I think. It was enjoyable. Um, I was so ready to get back to class. I was like, I kept checking to see if classes started. I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, this was unusual, a long break. It was. I thought we jumped right back into it. So I kept checking back to see if we had jumped into another chapter. I was like, no, I got your message. So I was like, okay, the 18th. But literally, I was just statues the whole time, just keeping myself brushed up on what we had just gone over. Okay, I'm having trouble getting the slideshow to work here. Let's see what's going on. Oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move it. And if you have any questions, you know we can talk about it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start the um, week one in um, the Introduction to Paralegal Studies course. And this is kind of a, a as it is titled, an introduction to just the general, how can we say it? Um, the characteristics of the paralegal profession and just a general overview of um, of what you're beginning to what you've decided to do as a career the um, I wanted to start because the author gives us an, a definition of what a paralegal is and it's on page three the um, this is a, a compilation of the ABA and the NALA, N-A-L-A. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But the, the definition is a legal assistant or paralegal is a person qualified by education, training, or work experience who is employed or retained by a lawyer, law office, corporation, governmental agency, or other entity who performs specifically delegated substantive legal work for which a lawyer is responsible. So 
it's kind of a general definition that we can kind of rely on. And I have to, as you know, I have I've always got a little story and I have to tell this little story. And again, as you know from my picture, I am an older person. And so when I started practicing law way back, and there were no paralegals. The, the practice of law involved attorneys in an office and secretaries. And the secretary was a clerical position, just what you would think a secretary would do. The um, answered the phone, and even as far back as I go, we were even still doing dictation, if you can believe that. And just general duties around the office. And so really there was not even a profession called paralegal. Well, you, I noticed, and I'm sure other lawyers, as, as the law practice developed, especially with the advent of the computer, then you started to see a position in law offices, a legal assistant or a paralegal. And so it's kind of developed over years to now being an integral part of any law firm. And so the, um, there may still even, there probably aren't even secretaries left in most law firms, but um, the, the position has really developed over a period of time. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons for that. And there are some financial reasons and other reasons. Now, lawyers are regulated by their state bar association. I'm a member of the Florida Bar, and my, I, my license is regulated by the um, state bar association. There is a national association called the ABA, the American Bar Association. It is totally voluntary. You pay dues to the ABA. They're, they have no legal authority over lawyers. But of course, as a national organization, they have a lot of influence over the law practice. They give seminars. So the, the national organization really conducts, uh, they have an annual convention that you can attend. And so it doesn't have any legal authority over attorneys, but it does have input into the legal profession. And there is a, if you go to the web, the ABA website, there is a division involving paralegals. And have, there's a whole section involving that. Now, these other two organizations, NALA, N-A-L-A, and F, the National Federation of Paralegal Associations, F NFPA, are two large, just what they say, they are national organizations that are supporting the, the paralegal career. They give seminars. They, um, I think you can get a certification through them. And they, of course, have a lot of information that, um, that, are, that would be available. The, I mentioned the state bars. They also have, I know Florida does, I would assume most state bars do as well, a pro provisions for paralegals. And it might benefit you to go to your state bar association and just look to see what developments the um, or what information they have there. It may be beneficial. Well, what do paralegals do? That's the, um, the, you have various options. You're taking a two year course where you'll get an AA in uh, paralegal and you're trained as um, for the two-year degree. 
there are four-year degrees available. And again, that might be something you want to consider. I, I don't really recommend it. I don't know that really the four-year degree gives you much of an advantage. I, there still are many paralegals who are working, you know, either with a high school or, or a general college education. So there's no requirement for this paralegal education, but it's certainly going to be a benefit to you when you get ready to start looking for a job. They're going to look at you as being more serious than maybe another candidate that, um, so that I think there is an advantage there. I don't know that the four year degree really adds anything to that. The, the issue of certification has been ongoing for many years. There has, there's pros and cons on both sides as to whether paralegals should be certified. It would be through the state bar association. And there's been a lot of debate backward and forward as to whether this is beneficial. Should, um, should the state, should you have a state paralegal exam that you have to pass. Again, there, there's arguments on both sides. I'm only aware of California as being the only state that certifies paralegals. If, you've, if you know of any other states, as far as I know, California is the only state that does have a formal certification program. I mentioned NALA and NFPA also has certification that you can get. And um, if, um, if you feel, and, and certainly anything like that is, is gonna be an advantage to, um, to your job search and, and when you become a, um, a full-time paralegal. The um, state certification I mentioned, the CLEs are, Lawyers have to, and in Florida, I have to, every three years, get 30 hours of, the CLE is continuing legal education. So I have to go to seminars and attend these seminars and accumulate 30 hours um, within the three years. So. Again, should there be a certification for paralegals, do they need continuing legal education? I think they do. And maybe I, it's probably the, the ABA and the national associations will, um, can provide some of that. But as far as a formal requirement, it's only California, I think, at this point. Well, what kind of paralegal skills do you need? And as you notice, the authors give you a list here of various skills. I don't want to go through each one of them in detail. The, um, you notice some that you probably already would assume you've got to be a good communicator, you've got to be able to deal with different types of people, the clients, the people in your office, the attorneys opposing counsel, uh, parties at the courthouse, in the clerk's office, the judges, secretaries, the judges. So you definitely have to be a good communicator. Analytical skills, where you're able to take a problem, break it down, analyze it, make decisions about it, that of course is gonna be a benefit. Obviously being a good reader, that you speak well, it kind of goes along with communication. They give you another list here. Some you know, are so obvious. You have to be a good listener, and your writing skills have to be well uh, of a certain level. That's important. The computer skills, that's a basic kind of requirement. The um, the We've talked about the computerized legal research. Obviously, you want to be proficient in Word. And in most law firms now, the 
billing is computerized, the timekeeping, all of this is, um, is on computer. The being organized, a person who has good interpersonal skills kind of goes back to the, the communication part. I do want to emphasize one here that probably is almost unique to the law practice. I know there are other professions that the idea that you can keep a confidence. I don't care what kind of law firm you work for. Lawyers learn very personal information about clients. You learn all the dirt, all the the warts that everybody has, all the character flaws and the very kinds of matters that should not be divulged to other people. You might have, you might be aware, and you're going to have this, where you know that a client in the office is in financial trouble, maybe considering bankruptcy. You, we won't even start with the personal problems that arise for people in their families. You're, you're going to have very sensitive information. And one of the skills that the paralegal has to have is keeping a cop, is keeping confidences. That's one of the basis for what lawyers do is that we have confidential information on our clients and they are not, these confidences are not to be disclosed to parties that are not entitled to it. So that is a very important skill, one of the more important probably. Being a professional, again, that goes along probably with how you conduct yourself, your appearance is important how you speak, all of these things are very important as, as, a, prof as a professional. The um, authors talk about the future of the profession. Again, I don't see that we're looking at any kind of major development. I think we're going, paralegals are gonna be used more and more by attorneys. So they're definitely, this is an area that there is a future, and um, and you certainly um, could um, could look forward to being employed really the rest of your life. You, you really there's no reason that if your health is good that um, that you can't be employed for many years. Now, chapter two, we kind of show now we've talked generally about what paralegals do, what are some of the skills. Now, where can they work? And this is an area that I always like to emphasize to students because I think the public in general has a very a large misperception about what par where paralegals work. And what I mean by that is it's assumed that paralegals work for attorneys in law firms. And that could be, that's, there. it's so far from the truth that there really is a misperception that there are these other areas we're going to talk about in a minute where you can be employed as a paralegal, not in a law firm. And so probably still the majority of the jobs are in law firms. And one of the first decisions you're going to have to make when you're looking for a job, what size firm do you want to work for? Because the, the whole environment, everything is different. And the, um, the small firms, and when we're talking about a small firm, we're talking about a sole practitioner. There are attorneys that just work for themselves, up to two or three attorneys, maybe five in a small firm. 
your the environment's going to be usually everybody knows everybody and hopefully it's a friendly situation just like in a small town you are going to get to know the other the parties that you work for very well you're going to be with them the majority of the time monday through friday and so you're um you're going to have close relationships with other attorneys in the office other paralegals other employees if um if the firm has other employees you're going to do a lot more than probably what you would expect uh, you may end up answering the phone one day when the receptionist is out there the duties are going to involve a lot more than just generally paralegal work so you want to be aware of that that the atmosphere is probably going to be low-key not as stressful and you, but you're going to be doing a lot of other duties the reverse is true of the large firm the large firms are very organized like any large organization you're probably only going to get to know the attorneys and paralegals in your department there may not be a lot of interaction with other departments in the firm uh, you may have an annual party that everybody comes to uh, but generally you're not going to have the personal contact that you had in the small firm an advantage of the large firm is you're probably going to be doing a lot of what we call paralegal work because generally the large firms are going to use you for research or the other duties that you would perform perform as a paralegal you're just not going to get the personal contact that you would have with the small firm i don't want to spend a lot of time on this but on page 23 when you get a chance in the textbook the authors give you a idea of the average salary and again i'm not sure what date this is it doesn't indicate there you see for a sole practitioner you probably would expect to make about 46,000 as a as a paralegal with a one person firm it goes on up to a firm over a hundred the authors give the figure of 67,000 as a the um, salary for a large a paralegal working for a large firm again it could be more some firms do very large volumes of business and that may not be the top that you can make you um, you certainly I don't think it's without I'm, I'm sure this happens that paralegals in a large firm that have been there for a while can make a hundred thousand now you've got to have had a lot of experience and you're going to be working for a very large firm but as I mentioned before the the surprise is there are all these other jobs available to paralegals corporations the government regulations that large corporations have to comply with there are paralegals in all of their they may even have a legal department within the corporation and so there are going to be paralegal jobs in the um, law department of the large corporations the government has many jobs available to paralegals again you might be working in a legal department but there are going to be numerous jobs in the government Legis administrative agencies have requirements for paralegals legislative offices in a um, in the state legislature or the federal government law enforcement has many paralegals working for them in the state attorney's office with the police department the public defender's office and just the courts in general are going to have 
positions for paralegals. Legal aid offices that cater mostly to the poor, they do legal work for poor clients who qualify that have that don't that have to meet a certain income requirement. There are going to be a lot of those jobs. And finally, and again, you probably wouldn't consider this until you had some experience. There are freelance paralegals. And the situation here is the the paralegal works for themselves. They have their own business and they work independently for various attorneys. Because you can imagine with a small firm, a an attorney may not be able to afford a full-time paralegal, but there could be certain cases that they need the additional support that a paralegal could provide and that they would hire you on an hourly basis to uh, do work for the law firm. And again, you'd be working for yourself, you'd have your own company, and you would bill the attorney for um, for your work. That. That, of course, there's always good and bad. Your, the, the positive side is you're independent, you're working for yourself, you have really, you make your own time. The disadvantage is you're running a business and it has to run at a profit. And so the disadvantage is that you're gonna to have to be a good business person too if um, if you decide to be a freelance paralegal, the the par the specialties that the the book lists, you're aware of a lot of these litigation. Of course, is probably the top type of law practice that you would work as a paralegal. But you notice there are all these other areas: real estate law. In, um, in the real estate area, you, you may be handling closings yourself. And the attorneys are just there if a, a problem arises. Personal injury law, certainly. A lot of positions paralegals have in, in that kind of practice. Insurance law, again, you're, um, you're gonna, a paralegal's gonna be experienced in those. And you, you notice the, the list here goes on and on. We, this probably isn't complete, a complete list anyway. I do mention the estate planning and probate area because many paralegals do most of the, par, of the work in a probate firm. The filing of the documents and really the attorney only gets involved in drafting wills, trusts, attending any hearings that are required for the probate, but the paralegal is very involved in, in that kind of work. Bankruptcy, again, is one in intellectual law, environmental law. All of these areas are, um, are going to be covered by, um, that you're going to be involved in criminal, family and criminal law probably makes up three quarters of the cases in our courts. So you're always going to be busy working in one of their those firms. The authors do give you another table that I just want to mention and it's over on page 34 and again it's a table of comp comp compensations but it breaks it down as to experience and how many years of experience you have and you notice it goes from 47,000 to the top of 64,000, but I don't think that, I don't consider that as being definitive of what you could make. It also breaks it down by region. And the, um, the West region, I guess this is California, is, has the uh, largest income. South is less, Northeast is close to West and the Midwest would be similar to the South. So it's something interesting to look at. I'm not sure how much benefit it is to you at this point. The, the authors give you some tips on planning your career, 
again, all of this I think is important. And, and some of the um, ideas for marketing yourself. And there are some good ideas here about what your resume should look like. And so you're, um, you're gonna be eventually marketing yourself to lawyers that you're applying for jobs. And so um, the, this could be beneficial that you um, are gonna go through interviews that you wanna present yourself in the right way. And so there are some good tips there as far as planning your career. Well, I'm gonna conclude the meeting at this point and let's see if you have any questions. I don't have any questions. Okay, um, let me check with Bristol, you have any questions? No, sir, I don't have any questions. Okay, um, well, you um, have a good rest of the week. You okay. as well. Okay, you too. And let me know if you need any help. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Please.